So Gabby, thanks again for talking to me today. I'm really excited. I'm so happy to be with you. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. And and we, we connected last time you were in LA and um, we just clicked. We're both students of Kundalini and A Course in Miracles and um, that kind of bonded us, but we just get along anyway, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I, I found my fellow uh, yogi who loves the wild weird yoga with me, so <laughs> I'm happy that we share that in common. <laughs> Yeah, and, and last time you were in L.A., you said one of the best things that I've ever heard in my life. I, I swear, it's like I always repeat it and I tell people. You said, I'm a Jewish, I'm just a Jewish girl who wears a turban and preaches about Jesus. <laughs> I'm a Jewish girl quoting Jesus, sometimes wearing a turban. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But how do all those play together? So when I joke around about being a Jewish girl wearing a <laughs> turban and speaking about Jesus, is that really, you know, this has nothing to do with religion. It's just like I happen to be born Jewish. I happen to have found this, the practices of A Course in Miracles, which are based in Christic terminology and Jesus' voice. Yeah. I happen to have landed in a Kundalini classroom with Sikh teachers that, you know, guided me to the technology of Kundalini. And what I've found in love from all of these different practices that I have been gifted throughout my life is that they are guiding me to deepen the depths of my spiritual awareness and and in my experience have nothing to do with religion whatsoever and I want to talk to you a little bit about Course in Miracles you just talked about that um, I personally have certain phrases from the book that I just um, I'll say to myself and I use them in regular life for example like if somebody's kind of tempting me to hate them or like be mad at them I'll say um, it is not this I would look upon I trust my brothers who are one with me and I love that one or I'll say peace and joy I offer you, my brother, that I may have God's peace and joy for my own. So are there any, are there any phrases that you use regularly that, you, that kind of just stuck with you? Definitely. Um, one big one that's been with me for a long time now is um, in my defenselessness, my safety lies. Mm. And, you know, there's a lot of moments throughout life where we're triggered and given the opportunity to get defensive and want to stick up for ourselves and want to fight back. And, um, many years ago, I was going through an experience where I was dealing with someone that was wrongly attacking me in their own illusory world. And so, you know, the Course teaches that if we, um, ins insistence is investment. And so if we invest in the illusions of others, then we are poor, right? Oh, yeah. So in the instances of fighting back and bringing, adding fuel to the fire, we're investing in the illusion. And so the message here is that in your defenselessness, your safety lies. And that in your defenselessness, you are not investing in the false fear-based illusions of others. So, so really just being, being in an energy and a presence of defenselessness, being in a practice of forgiveness, and releasing yourself from the illusory story that someone else has created. And, and you meet so many people, um, you know, when you're on book tour or when you're teaching and I imagine that their energies sometimes stick to you. Um, you know, not that not that they're necessarily bad people, but but you don't want other people's energy on you. How do you clear yourself? How do you disconnect from any consciousness that's not your own? Yeah, this is a great question. You know, I think that first and foremost, it's about creating uh, energetic boundaries. Uh, around yourself so that you can protect yourself as much as possible so that that energy field can't even touch you, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. And then, and then, of course, there's always moments when we're, um, you know, spiritually blindsided or energetically blindsided and all of a sudden someone's left their imprint on you and you're like, how the hell did that happen, right? Yeah. But first and foremost is really setting the intention and, and creating a field around you that's very protected. And so that first begins with your intentions. And so for instance, if I'm on a stage and I'm talking to thousands of people and my arms are wide open and I'm like, I'm here to serve and I'm here to serve and I'm here to serve, the second I get off that stage, I have to go dig a book signing, right? And there's a line of hundreds of people right after I've been this cracked open. Right. So what do I do? I walk off the stage and I shut her down, you know? Shutting her down can be as simple as crossing my arms. Shutting her down can be as simple as zipping myself up. So I'll take an imaginary zip from my toes all the way over my head all the way down to my ankles <laughs> and I literally zip myself up if I'm with another spiritual running buddy or a friend I'll say can you please zip me up you know mm. so it's like it's it's really about taking responsibility for my field and protecting my field the same way that I would protect my home or protect a child it's you know protecting my field so um, making that intention uh, being mindful uh, noticing when there's a, when there's an energy that's coming towards me that's not not that you know, not that clean. Um, I had an experience where I was at a Hay House talk and there's um, one of the producers was working at my book signing and she said, um, 
oh my God, I love the people who come to your book signing. They're so respectful of you. And I said, you know, the people that come to my book signing are the same people that come to all the other book signings that you've been doing today. It's just that I put out an energy that my field will be respected and they will reflect that back. So I don't have people coming to my book signing being like, here's all my shit, let me tell you, you know what I mean? Or, hey, Gabby, I need, I need, I need. They're coming and they're saying, thank you for signing my book, can I take a picture, thank you, goodbye, you know? <laughs> and that's the energy that I'm not, it's very loving, it's very caring, it's very open, but it's, it's an energy that says, I'm not open for business, but I will love you and guide you and say hello to you, you know what I mean? And that's, when I say I'm not open for business, like my energy field isn't wide open for you to take and, 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 and launch onto me. Right? Right. Like you don't want to be, you don't want um, vampires basically like draining you. That's right. Saying, you know, this is, you know, we're, we're shut down for that party, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Put that out there. <laughs> so that reminds me of, uh, like, I think it's a Buddhist saying where if you plant mango trees, you'll get mangoes. You plant orange trees, you get oranges. So you're kind of at your book signings, you know, saying I'm giving you love and understanding and, and compassion and now you give that back to me, right? Exactly. It's saying... You know, the, the seed I'm planting in those instances is that I'm going to be loving, kind, and generous, but also, you know, not wide open for you to take from me. I'm right. going to be loving, kind, and generous, and protective of my field. And so I'm curious, how often do you meditate? I've been meditating daily for um, almost a decade. Uh, and for many, many years, but consistently for over, over a decade. And so... My meditation practice is, um, it ranges, you know, there's, there's times where I'm doing a longer practice, there's times when I'm doing a three minute practice. It depends on, on where I am in my life and what my intuition is guiding me towards and what I'm feeling I need at that time. Um, as a student of Kundalini, I, I have great, a great repertoire of Kundalini meditations that I can call on and I believe that to teach is to learn so I practice as many as I can so that I can master them and teach them. And um, and truthfully, the best type of meditation for me is just silent contemplation, just sitting in stillness and listening, and because there's a lot to be heard. Yeah, I just uh, I just did an interview with David G, and he talks about in his book he talks about all these different kinds of meditations. I mean, he's got so many, but he says you know the best one is the one where you're contemplating, the one where you go inward, because that's the one where it's real meditation. You're not thinking, you're not using any uh, you know skills really. You're just focused on on you're, you know, on the inside. That's correct, yeah. That is kind of probably the best form of meditation is just tuning in. And can I just tell everyone how excited I am because we're going together to see John of God in September? Yes! yes. You you told me about him. I I, uh, I had heard, you know, because he was on Nightline and, and on Oprah, so I, I heard, but you were the one who was like, Frank, you gotta go. Yeah, so um, I've been a devotee of John of God and the mediums in Brazil at the Casa de Dom Ignacio in Abidjania, Brazil. Um, I've been a, a, a devotee of their teachings and, and work since 2008. I experienced my own um, radical life changes as a result of visiting John of God. Um, I was guided through the practice, through the blessings of John of God and the invitation to welcome spiritual entities into my life. Just to give a backdrop, John of God is a trans medium who channels ancient entities who were healing doctors. Mm. And when you, the physical being, go before John of God, he sees you like a hologram and he sees your past lives and your current life and he sees your, your physical and spiritual conditions. And really what he sees is the root cause of the condition. Mm. And whatever entity, spirit that's incorporated into his body at that time will give you a message and will give you a blessing and will give you guidance. And so sometimes what you're going to, most of the time the message that you get is to have a spiritual surgery, which is just really a psychic intervention. And it's a blessing that's bestowed upon you and it's an invitation for your own guides and the spirit guides to welcome into your life to start to guide you and heal you and work on you. And that work can come in a lot of forms. You know, for instance, if somebody has cancer, they may go home from visiting God of God and all of a sudden they could see that the cancer is gone. In other instances, they could see that the tumor may have gotten bigger. And in that case, that's a miracle too because the tumor has gotten bigger so that it can be removed, right? Right. So there's certain, there's certain, um, we can't say that like just because something is gone, it's a miracle. Everything that's received in these instances is a miracle. And so, 
in my case, you know, I was severely codependent and I was a recovering addict and I was drug, you know, really dealing with my addictions to relationships and romance and being in the wrong relationships. And in 2008, I asked John of God for a healing on my relationship area. And at the time I was in a relationship with someone who was, um, a perfect match for my ego, right? It was just like he wasn't as available and I was needy. And so that was like the perfect match. And through, you know, asking John of God for help, I was guided to my coach, Ra Goddess. And so spirit works through people. And I did this great healing work with her. And that was the blessing that I got and received from my first visit with John of God. And in that experience, I was guided to end the relationship that I was in that wasn't serving me. And I was guided to end it with a lot of love and forgiveness. And I, and, and I spent a year apart in that relationship. And then um, we stayed friends because it was, we allowed it to end with love. I was allowing myself to be more real, and I was in recovery of my own spiritual um, awakening and in recovery of my addiction um, to, you know, codependency. Mm. And in that time of healing, you know, again, spirit will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And I was guided back to that relationship a year later, and now I'm married to that man. So that's the work of John Rugat. You know, I brought a picture of me and my now husband to him in 2008 and said, please give me a blessing. Give this relationship a healing. And it's so emotional for me. Wow. And, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. It's like I asked for that healing in 2008. And the first part of the healing that received was that we broke up with forgiveness. Wow. And then wow. in the end, we were guided to be partners and, and, and get married, which I could never have imagined. I couldn't have told. I couldn't have contemplated that story in my own mind, Frankie. Like that was not even something I could imagine. So that was just one, you know, miracle story of John of God that I can share of my own. I have many others. You know, my mother was healed of um, hepatitis C through visiting John of God and the entities. And so there's many, many stories. But wow. um, we could do a full hour on this. <laughs> And maybe we will. Maybe we'll do more videos when we're in Omega and talk and at John of God. So yeah, maybe ab yeah, maybe after. I just thought it was really funny that I I I emailed you and I said, Hey Gabby, you know I I saw some of these videos of John of God, and uh, you know I want all the blessings, all the good energy, but I don't think I want the surgery. And you laughed and you were like, Frankie, you don't you don't tell him what you want. You get what you need. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, man. You. You you can't go there with any expectation. And it's like any spiritual path that you sign up for. You know, whenever you sign up for anything, whether it's a coaching course or a visiting a medium, it doesn't matter. You have to leave your agenda at home because there is a plan much greater than yours. I mean, it is just much, much greater than yours. So just drop it all. Um, you will be held. I'll be there to support you and you'll be taken care of. And there's nothing, there's nothing bad that can happen. Only great can happen from that experience. So don't worry about what happened. Don't worry about what you're told to do. <laughs> Yeah, only I always do one of my favorite affirmations is Louise Hay. Only good things are coming to me. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Before we before we end this, is there any like if you had somebody come to you and say, Gabby, you know, I love your work. I, I, I want to be more spiritual. What do you tell them? Like what what of all your amazing books, what would you recommend? What practice would you tell them to go follow? You know, I think that the the core the key principles to a spiritual practice are three things. One is daily silence and, and contemplation, right? So, so meditative practice of, of some kind. Mm -hmm. And that could be, um, and, and I have countless, countless free meditations on my website, gabbyb.tv or on my Facebook fan page. I mean, I give free guided meditations so you can start your meditation practice immediately just by going to my website. Um, I also have a beginner's guide to meditation on my website as well, which is really helpful. So you can start that now. The other thing that I, I would say is prayer, you know, a conversation with a, a inner guidance system of your own understanding. And so for, you know, if you're new to spiritual practices, maybe you just believe in the universe or maybe you believe in a God that was a religious God, or maybe you believe that you have a higher self that is, is, is speaking within you and you pray to your higher self. It doesn't matter who you pray to. It's just, it's just turning over your fear-based belief systems to the guidance of a higher presence and a loving voice. And we all have that loving voice within us, and I don't give a crap what you call it. Just, just, just mm -hmm. connect to it, whatever way you want. I love, I love what you just said. Um, your, uh, your inner guidance of your own understanding. I've never heard yeah. of like God referred to in that way before, or universe. Well, well it's a very twelve-step way of, of referencing God. You know, a God of your own understanding, and that's that's you know a huge part of you know the twelve-step theories is like you know just establishing your own spiritual connection. That's what I believe in deeply. And before we end, is there anything you want to say to the people listening? Um, you know, I just want to, maybe I can just sort of close by saying that I think that 
anyone that is brave enough to wake up that inner awareness is what inspires me most in the world. What inspires me most is, is just witnessing people who are brave enough to wake up to their inner relationship and a deeper connection and to face the fears that may be blocking that connection. And that to me is true bravery. And I honor anyone who is even watching this video because that means that you have a, a spark of light within you that's saying, I'd like to know more. And so I, I bow to all of you watching today.